Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Wit, and I'm here to talk about An American Tragedy by Theodore Traeser, uh, which is a really great novel. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I do think it could have used with some editing, and uh, a good chunk of it could have been cut out. Um, but I overall really enjoyed it. It was very psychological, painfully relevant, and uh, I could, uh, you know, early on in part one, there were some aspects of the way the main character looks at uh, people with wealth or money, or far more than he did because he comes from a poor family. It's like, I remember those feelings exactly when I was young, and I hate it <laughs> that I felt like that, and I hate that I re relate to you, Mr. Clyde Griffiths, because you are far more selfish than I've ever been, and I've been quite selfish in my day. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, really great novel, in my opinion. I enjoyed it. thought it was still it read like it was modern. Um, I would not get the Signet Classics edition, though, because the ink smears. Uh, maybe you can see a little bit of the gray. That's the ink from the, from the book. And there are some typos in here. But uh, otherwise, maybe another edition would be much better. Um... This story follows a young man named Clyde Griffiths. He is from a poor family uh, out, in, out near Kansas City. Uh, his family has moved around all over because they are a family of missionaries uh, who are poor. And Clyde Griffiths is frustrated with uh, religion. He doesn't really care for um, spreading the good word of God. And he... Also is frustrated by his lack of opportunities because he's poor and because of his lack of education, um, because he's not really been around long enough to really get proper schooling. Um, one day <laughs> he becomes self-conscious of the boys around him, sees how nice they're dressed and uh, also is frustrated by the church goings. Um, so he decides to get a job, uh, and then he gets another job uh, that pays even better. And <laughs> once he gets that job, he feels like a high roller. And in lieu of having a personality to uh, attract, and more appropriately for uh, Clyde Griffith's own intentions, ensnare a young woman, uh, in lieu of having a personality, he spends all his money. <laughs> His personality is, I have money, now be mine, uh, because that makes me interesting. I love you so much because I want you to be mine, is what he thinks. He, he falls in love with a girl named uh, Hortense, who is, uh, she likes to play with all the boys. Uh, nothing too serious, but, you know, she likes their gifts, she likes the attention, she likes to play along and have fun, and more power to her, I say. Uh, but this really frustrates Clyde because he thinks, but I'm spending my money on you. What's wrong? Uh, but she lets him know the deal and he won't get it through his thick skull <laughs> that she's not something to be bought. Uh, even though he keeps, she keeps telling him. <sighs> anyway. Uh, there's another issue and I bring this up because it is sort of a pattern um, his older sister runs away with a man early, early on in the novel. By near the end of part one, she has returned, pregnant, without the baby's father. Um, and she is in need of some money, which Clyde has. But he's been keeping that money secret, uh, and his free time secret from his parents so that he doesn't have to go to church and can spend it all on himself and cute girls like Hortense. Uh, who wants a $200 coat, which would have been an enormous expense. She bargains it down to $115. Still an enormous expense in <laughs> 1920 uh, or the early 1920s. Um, mom, the mom of uh, Clyde, asks for some money. Any Anything that he can spare. She needs, I think it was $50, if I remember right. Um... 
and he wants to help his sister, but he can't help but blame her for getting herself in this situation because he's selfish and he doesn't consider women to be people. <laughs> he doesn't care about family or anything like that. Uh, he eventually feels guilty enough to hand his mother a fiver, even though he's got the money that she needs in his pocket. <laughs> Uh, and he gets into a situation where, um, as a treat for, uh, helping to get the coat, uh, or starting to get the coat for Hortense, um, Hortense agrees to go to, uh, Kansas City with him and some other guys, uh, and another girl. And she takes great interest in this guy who has taken this car, uh, without asking permission. Uh, which drives Clyde up the wall and <laughs> they have a big fight. Uh, when they're trying to return, uh, there's a terrible accident where a young girl is uh, run over and dies within the hour. Uh, everybody scrams except uh, the thief and another girl, the thief of the car, the person who borrowed without asking. Um, who rats on everybody, rightfully so, tells on everybody. They were all, you know, come on, go faster, go faster, let's get home, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and Clyde runs away. He's, he skedaddles on over to other Midwest towns, Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, eventually making his way to Chicago. There, he, he makes an okay living, but it's a little more expensive. He's not making quite as much. And, but he gets a golden opportunity from an uncle uh, who has a collar-making factory for shirts. Um, and he sees this as his way to make it big. <laughs> However, unfortunately, um, his uncle offers the opportunity, but has, maybe in a respectable way, uh, he's getting the job out of nepotism, but he's not going to just promote him through the ranks. Uh, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, but he leaves his son in charge, Clyde's cousin Gilbert. He leaves Gilbert in charge of dealing with Clyde. Gilbert doesn't like Clyde because they look just like each other and he doesn't want to be associated with that um, because he's from a poor part of the family. And I, I suppose he doesn't want people to recognize Clyde as Gilbert and have an impression <laughs> of him based on the wrong person. But, um, you know, and a number of different things he does say. Um, uh, so he gets the worst job, the lowest paying job in the factory, and he's there for quite a while. And he's like really, uh, Clyde is getting really frustrated that his family's not really doing much. <laughs> and his uncle one day asks about him, having not thought about him for months. Uh, and so how's, how's that Clyde boy doing? Uh, and Gilbert, oh, he's doing all right. I don't know if he's going to work out, though. Uh, and, you know, they're talking and it seems like, oh, that's such a pity, even though he's working hard and uh, doing just fine. Uh, a bit frustrated, but people are beginning to recognize uh, um, Clyde and want to, you know, they sort of think, wow, if I become friends with Clyde, he's a Griffiths. And if I can, you know, mosey on over and, and get close with him, maybe some of that uh, success in the family can rub off on me and my, my stock can rise, my status can rise, uh, which is exactly what Clyde wants. But he gets really sick and tired of the pores <laughs> trying to rub, uh, have him rub off on them when he wants his family to rub off on him. Uh, Eventually, uh, during Gilbert and, uh, Gilbert, I forgot his father's name, Gilbert and the uncle's conversation, uh, Gilbert reluctantly says, I guess we're going to have to have lunch with him, aren't we? Uh, and <laughs> the uncle doesn't want anything to do with his nephew either. <laughs> and he's, uh, all right, yeah, I suppose so. Arrange it. And uh, it won't do that he's got the worst job in our entire company. We should, uh, what will other people think if we don't help our family out? <laughs> Which <laughs> is just really funny. Um, anyway, eventually he does get a promotion. 
uh, and he's put in charge of a small part of a factory uh, where he's the lead for a whole bunch of young women. <sighs> and this is where he meets Roberta, who he takes a fancy to, but he's got rules that say, you know, no fraternizing with uh, people who work underneath you. Perfectly reasonable rule and would have saved him a whole heck of a lot of trouble and her especially. Um, he likes her a lot uh, and he wants to be with her, but he never wants to marry her. He's very clear about that with himself because she's one of the poors and he wants his stock to rise. He can't anchor himself down. Um, eventually, because Gilbert is such a such a bore in a way, such a square and a rude kind of guy, uh, there's another girl, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting her name now, <laughs> another girl that uh, takes great interest in um, Clyde, uh, and she's from a well-off family. When she first was introduced to him, she was curious about him, but then she found out he's from a poor side of the family. Uh, what a pity. But then he gets his promotion, she's thinking, well, wait a second, maybe I can, uh, you know, get back at Gilbert in some way, and uh, I'm actually quite interested in him as well. And they sort of form a romantic kind of relationship secretly because it can't be out too much because people might talk and this kind of thing, and, you know, on and on and on. We've got to be clear about our appearances here now. Um, and, well, the problem is... Clyde gets Roberta pregnant. Abortion is illegal. <laughs> Hundred years later, good Lord. Uh, Clyde gets Roberta pregnant, can't do anything. She's asking him to get married, to save her fate, save her reputation, and save his in a way as well, uh, although he's not supposed to uh, be with her. Um, because she works under him, uh, she's got a whole idea about what to do to make this as clean as possible. Her plan is to marry him. Uh, she doesn't even mind. Eventually she breaks down to the point, because Clyde is selfish, uh, that they can even get divorced after X amount of months. But just to save my reputation and yours a little bit, please, uh... But if he gets married to her, he can't pursue this relationship with the other woman. What is he going to do? Because the medicine he goes to get does not work. Abortion is illegal and no doctor is willing to do anything. Well, that's where the American tragedy comes in and I'll leave it at that. But what I will say is this. Uh, 13 minutes and 11 seconds in, or 15 seconds in. This novel is really great about uh, exposing the, the deep flaws of sort of like the American character, this, the, the vain, selfish aspect, um, uh, and also the way, um, you know, corporate people can take advantage or misuse um, uh, people will be greedy, uh, and people who are willing to rise, who have this kind of mindset of, I need to do anything I can, uh, which is inherent in the sort of American dream, <laughs> um, as it's known. And uh, yeah, I just think it exposes all kinds of problems and is still relevant because... Um, had abortion been legal or accessible, um, well, it would have been a tragedy in its own way, uh, this whole situation with Roberta uh, and Clyde and, and the other girl. Uh, but, yeah, I just think the way that Clyde is shown to idolize and worship wealth uh, perfectly encapsulates uh, all the worst flaws in uh, the idealized American dream, idealized American spirit, uh, and this kind of thing. 
and the ways in which he acts selfishly uh, is vain through his own greed and this kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, man, nothing has changed at all. Uh, it also has some interesting things. There is some some heart to it for the religious characters. Has a few things to touch on for uh, religion because uh, you know there's some trouble at the end of the book dealing with the trial and um, oh it also goes full bore into <laughs> showing the flaws of the justice system. Um, uh, when there is a trial for what happens. And uh, if you want to have an idea, well, they're on a lake here, on a boat. Um, it's based on a true story, by the way, <laughs> which is horrifying. And, um, yeah, it also yeah has some things to say about uh, the death penalty and, and this kind of thing. And it's very, very well thought out uh, in in that regard. And I quite enjoy it. Um, probably not for everyone. I, you know, if you don't want to read about a poor woman being taken advantage of and eventually murdered, um, yeah, I would not touch this book. But uh, the way it, it gets in and internalizes these, um, these weird psychoses, I guess, of uh, an American way of thinking, uh, then I would have to say this is aptly named uh, An American Tragedy is for you. Thank you.